Hi, welcome back to Once Upon a Game. I'm Kevin Kitchens, and in this episode, we're going to do an unboxing of the classic Fighting Formations Gross Deutschland Motorized Infer Infantry Division. It's one of uh, this is probably Chad Jensen's second best game, in my opinion. Obviously, the first is going to be Combat Commander, and nothing's ever going to beat that as the best game ever made, ever. But he tried, and he came up with Fighting Formations, which is a you know more of a uh, larger scale uh, tank and infantry game. Uh, this is the second printing. This is out of print at the moment, um, but hopefully, uh, I believe there is a there's one expansion out for it already, and another one is rumored to be in development, which hopefully means this will be back in print very very soon. But it's usually pretty easy to get a copy of uh, in the stores. So. I am going to crack it open just so you can see what is inside, what should be inside if you pick up even a secondhand copy, and uh, go from there. Hey, if you're enjoying these videos, be sure to give us a like and a share. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell. One ringy dingy. So, hopefully, if they do do a reprint, they will come out with the. This is in the thinner style box. As you can see, hopefully with another expansion and a reprint, they'll go to their deeper three to four inch box to hold all the content. But this is what is there now. So I have played this before. I've, I owned it before and liked it and wanted to get another copy. And so I uh, managed to find one that was completely sealed. And so that is what we're gonna do with the unboxing. So as usual with GMT, you get a bag of bags for storing your counters. And then we get some wooden pieces here. Uh, you get a pawn and some wooden cubes. And you use these to uh, track the different uh, actions that are available. We'll see that in a little bit. Um, you get a bunch of different dice, and this is a really, this is, this is a brilliant design. This copy is so old that the, in, the bags themselves are starting to uh, cloud over, seems like. So you get, you get two of each. You get two six-sided dice. You get two eight-sided dice. You get two ten-sided dice. You get two twelve-sided dice, and you get two twenty-sided dice. And the attacking is based on the dice you roll uh, is based on various factors. Look at the strength of the unit. And then, huh, look at that, we got a fate card. It's got ties to combat commander. So, uh, again, the fate card does the same thing. It uh, allows you to, um, if you have the fate card, you can pass it to your opponent and then you can re-roll or force them to re-roll uh, the previous die roll. So, it's kind of neat. Uh, gives you a little bit of mitigation. And if the scenario is tied, same thing. Whoever has the card breaks the tie and wins the game. So you get one of those. So which side has it? And then you got assets, asset cards. And you got the Soviets and the Germans. And there's two decks. And these are special cards that can be used during the game. So here we have order, flip the air support marker to the Soviet side, or if already on the Soviet side, conduct two, conduct two consecutive aircraft barrages. So you'll have these cards assigned, you know, assigned to you, and you can play them during the game to, uh, to kind of create some chaos and variability in events, things like that. So we have cards for, like I said, for both sides here. There are probably 54, 54 cards, 27 for each side. All right, now we've got the playbook. This is version 1.1 of the playbook. And this is in the classic GMT matte finish style. Full color. And this has all the scenarios in it. There's scenario one, surprise at sunset. And if you're familiar at all with Combat Commander, you'll see he's got a very orderly system. He and his wife Kay uh, worked really hard on making the best manuals ever. So it guides you through the setup process, the victory conditions, so on and so forth. Shows you the uh, order of battle. Uh, 
and then you got a whole bunch of historical notes here at the end and then samples of play opportunity fire direct fire I'm very happy to have this back in my collection I don't I don't like to play a lot of two-player war games but I knew this was one I definitely wanted to have again so there's 10 scenarios and then at the front here it tells you how to set up a scenario uh, optional rules some additional rules on fortification so on and so forth so that's pretty cool all right it's unusual that we have the cards and the dice and everything at the top of a GMT box. Normally there's an insert, you know, and down there, down on the bottom. So I'm not used to having those things here. So here's the rule book for the series. And this tells you the, the actual rules. And some of the rules continued into here, but this is the series rule book. And that's also version 1.1, full color. Uh, the playbook with all everything that's in it, clocks in at 64 pages. And this one, the rule book, is actually very short. It's only 24 pages. Core rules mechanics, glossary, always define the terms at the beginning. And then go on. It's a very, very, I'm semi-reviewing this here as I go, but it, since I have played it, it's a very brilliant system. I really do like it a lot. So. There's rules, terrain, descriptions. All right, so there's your series rule book. Now we got our counter sheets. There's a lot of counters here. Let's pull these out. Let's see. All right, so we have, there, those are markers. There's a sheet of markers and there's, well, it's not too bad. It's four sheets of counters. Okay, and looks like you got Russians and Germans on both sheets. So we do have our we do have infantry, we have our uh, weapons, and then we do have armored fighting vehicles. Any aircraft guns? If you have any aircraft guns, that means then it kind of implies that you're going to have aircraft, right? So you get one counter sheet, two. T-70s, Panzer IVs, T-34s, 76B, crew counters, engineers, Right, and then we've got markers, the usual things, like if they're spent, they're broken, unconfirmed kill, pinned, suppressed, shaken, smoke markers, sighted markers, sudden death marker. You can see how, how one design, the brilliance of Combat Commander, influenced this a little bit too. Wire on the opposite side, mines. Control markers. So there's your counters. And then, this looks familiar. You have your uh, track display. You have your initiative track. And whoever has the initiative, uh, if I'm remembering correctly, whoever has the initiative um, is the one who is, uh, uh, can take actions and then when it passes over to the other side, then they get to take action so it passes over to the other side. So it's a moving back and forth scale. It's pretty cool. You have your time track. And then this is your order matrix. And uh, the markers will slide based on what's available. So if you want to spend a certain amount, you can only buy certain actions. And as it's been used, um, then you have to spend more to take that action. You can take any action below a marker. So there's red cubes will go on here, if I'm recalling correctly. And it's really, really cool. I mean, obviously you're going to need to read the rule book, but, and you can get the rule book on the GMT site and read the, read the rules, but it's definitely an ingenious system. I really like it a lot. 
So you get this. This will sit on next to the map, just like in Combat Commander. And I, I shouldn't keep comparing it to Combat Commander since they're so so tightly integrated. So um, this is cool. And then got the player aid, and there's one of these. So you have to share. If you're playing with an opponent. Tells you about sighting marker fortifications, direct fire attacks, fire arcs for the units. Uh, the tanks do sit sideways, so they face the front. And I know there were some uh, complaints that they didn't do a top-down tank image, but you know what? We're adults; we can get over this. Um, so it's pretty cool. Um, accuracy grid for attacks, for targeting, barrage. And then another player reference chart. This is for the terrain. Gives you all the details you need to know about that. And the other side gives you the melee tables. And it's based on the attacking German versus the targeted Soviet, or the attacking Soviet versus the targeted German. So it's it's definitely async uh, not asynchronous, but uh, asymmetric in the uh, in the management of the uh, the melee. So it's pretty neat. Okay, and then we have our maps, and there are six of them, and they are huge. So we got one, we got two B. Well, let's say, take it back. We've got four maps, four sheets here. They may be, they're back printed. So they are pretty large. Uh, I believe they're four by four sheets by two. Right, so they are a 34, uh, 30, uh, yeah, they're 34 by 22 maps. So, let try to show it to you here as best I can. Let's zoom out a little bit. <laughs> they're so big. So, you got a city. So you get four map sheets, so you get eight maps total. So this was one and two A. Try to show them all to you here. They're kind of thin. You're obviously gonna to wanna to put plexi on them. So then we've got two B, which is like a rail yard with some fields. Some rivers and marsh. Forest and a road there. Definitely gonna need a large sheet of plexi to mount these, put these on. So it looks like you got one through seven, and we got two A and two B. So big river or big marsh looking hexes there. We'll get these other two out of thoroughness. The city. Creek. This is map four. Mountain hill in the middle. And then we've got a big forest. Finally, map six. Some fields. And you almost have to have, oh, this is interesting. So seven and eight are little half sheet maps. So here's seven and there's eight. So that's kind of cool. So you can have a half sheet scenario. If you fold it right, then you're looking at a 22 by 17 map. And that's very helpful for playing a smaller scenario in a smaller space. I like that. 
So you, what I was about to say is you almost have to have for since you're including the uh, vehicles, you almost have to have the larger map because the firing ranges on those vehicles was a lot longer. That's why most of the uh, the games that include them, well, they're either unrealistically included or they are uh, larger scale. And so the maps, you know, smaller hexes, and you move the, the counters around. I mean, me, they're smaller hexes, and the, the counters represent, instead of a single vehicle, they represent a, uh, you know, a, a group of vehicles. So um, in this case, having the larger maps is pretty necessary, at least. So. So anyway, if you pick up a copy of Fighting Formations Gross Deutschland Infantry Division from GT Games designed by Chad Jensen, you're going to get one, two, three, four map sheets. You're going to get the display board, time track display. You're going to get the series rule book. You're going to get the playbook. You're going to get Five pairs of dice, five pair of dice. You're gonna get two decks of asset cards, one for the Germans, one for the Soviets. You're going to get a fate card that you can turn in to force a diary roll. You're gonna get nine, 10 wooden cubes and a pawn. You're gonna get a terrain chart reference sheet and the melee table sheet. You're gonna get the barrage table, player aid card, the player aid card. <laughs> You're gonna get four sheets of counters and one sheet. You're gonna get one sheet of tokens and four sheets of counters, unit counters, and some markers and command counters. And you are going to also get a bag of bags and that is everything that comes in fighting formations gross deutschland motorized infantry division by chad jensen and gmt games thank you so much for watching god bless you bye bye oh.